Today's Tanya for the 17th of Tammuz is at the beginning of Perig Hay of Egeres Hachuva. It's on page Tav Tzadik Hay Amadalev. The number at the bottom of the page is 362. The Altarebbe is explaining the, the, the reason why in the olden days when a person committed a sin for which the punishment is Carter's then he would die literally before 50, or if it was Misa B'desha he would die before he was 60. And t- today, in recent generations, after the Beis HaMikdash, the, 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 the people who commit those same Avedas, the same sins, do not, do not die prematurely. So that, so that it begins to explain the difference between the Neshama and the angels, the Neshama is a Chelek Hashem, whereas the Malachim are called Bnei Elokim. That the Malachim, the angels are related to the name Elokim, whereas the, the Neshama is related to the name, name Hashem. And just as in Hashem, the Yud represents Chachma, and the He represents the expansion of the Chachma, the Vav represents the six emotions, and the He represents speech. The same is true also in the Neshama, that the Neshama has Chachma with which it can understand godliness, and when it does, that's the He, that's the Bina, and then the Vav are the emotions of Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem, and then there's the He, which is the, the, the deed, the act of the Mason, the act of the Mitzvahs. And that is because the Neshama comes not from the external from, this, from the word of God, but rather from the internal breath that God breathed into, into man. The Nisham is coming down and being drawn into this world, to be clothed in a body. The neshama comes from the inner aspect of God, which is the source of speech, who hevel ha'elyein, and what is the source of speech? The breath, which yet which eventually gets divided into the different letters and different pronunciations, and this breath is merumos be'es he tatokinal, is represented by the letter he, the second he in God's name. As mentioned before, it says that he breathed into him a living soul, and the man became a living being. So we see that this breathing does not end above, but rather it is from there that the neshama comes into the body, so that the person is a living person. And when we say that there is a breathing of the neshama, it means from the internal. So the end of the Pesach, until now he explained the beginning of the Pesach, that the Jew comes from Hashem, that is a part of Hashem and not a Likim. The end of the Pesach is that Yaakov is the rope of his inheritance. This is an analogy, just as a rope. The, the head, the beginning of the rope, is at the top, and the end of the rope is at the bottom. In other words, the rope represents a downward progression. The same is true also with the neshama. It is in its origin a chelik Hashem, but then there is a rope that brings it downwards. The meaning of the of the verse where it says that he breathed, it comes to teach us not only what the origin of the neshama is, but also the manner in which it is brought down. For example, when a person breathes in a certain direction, blows in a certain direction. If there is something blocking the breath, blocking the, 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 the air, then the breath will not reach the, beyond that 
obstacle at all. In other words, an obstacle will block out the breath. The only time the breath can reach where it's going is if there are no obstacles. And the same, the same idea is true also. That the breath with which the nisham comes down into the body has to be unobstructed. If there's something interfering between the body and the breath, then the breath doesn't reach the body. And in truth, what could possibly block the divine breath, the, the breathing of the neshama into the body? Nothing physical can do that. Nothing spiritual can do that. Nothing can block out God. No place is devoid of him. He is everywhere, and in heaven above and on earth below, there is nothing besides him. And he fills the worlds, so there can't be anything blocking his presence, other than what it says in the Novi, only the sin is capable of blocking the breath, the, the, the breath of, of his mouth, from reaching the body. Why is it that a sin can block it out? Because they go against God's will. The sin is that which is against God's will. And it is God's will, it is the will of God that gives life to everything, that all that God desired, He made. So the making comes from the desire, from the will. That the divine will, the Rotten Elyein, is the point at the top of the Yud, which is the source of the Chachma. So it's the beginning of all Hashpa, the beginning of all of all revelation. It is the source of the Yud of God's name. And since the sin goes against the Ratzin, therefore the sin blocks out the, the influence, the, the sharing of, of chayas, of, of life that comes from God to the world. The only thing that can block it out is that which is directly opposite, opposed to the will which is giving the life, or which is the life. V'zehu inyana karus. And this is the meaning of karus. That this rope, which carries the neshama from its original place in the name Hashem, the inner breath, the source of all speech, from there the neshama comes down through this rope, that is the chevel that connects the top to the bottom, the origin of the neshama, to the neshama as it is in the body. So this rope can be severed, which would mean severing the flow of life from the name Hashem to the body here, to the neshama as it is here below. So again, <laughs> it interrupts the flow of life from the name Hashem, Shanim Shecha Mehetato Akinal, that comes from the second hey, the last hey of God's name, it is cut away from the name Hashem, from before me, the other sins, where, which, for which the punishment is not cut us, so there isn't the severing of the rope, yet there is a weakening. And what is pegam? What does this weakening mean? What does this blemish? The blemish is like in pegimas hasakin. In the sakin with, with, with which you shech, the kosher animal, the, the, the blade has to be perfectly smooth. Pegima means that there's a nick in it. While derech so what does it mean to nick or to damage the rope? 
הוא על דרך מושל מחבל אב שוזר מתייג חבול עם דקים The rope is made up of fine threads. So the rope that connects the neshama is a rope made up of 613 threads. So when a person commits a sin for which the punishment is not causes, so that the entire rope is not severed, but a thread of that rope is severed. The thread that is that rep, that corresponds to that particular mitzvah. But even when a person is guilty of a sin that is punishable by kodesh and by miso, even so, some influence is still felt from the neshama, from the godly soul, some after effect lingers in the body. And it's from that after effect that a person can live to the 50th or 60th birthday, but not more. The statement that the Arizal made that when a person is, is guilty of, of kodesh, the neshama gets cut off on an internal level, but there's an encompassing element of the neshama that still gives life to the body. This is not referring to the physical life of the body, and it applies only until 50 years, and then that too is, is, is discontinued, or he is describing what happens in our time, as we will explain later. But in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, this didn't happen, and that's why the person literally died. So the Altarebbe first explains what Kodesh is when, in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, the person would actually die before 50 or 60. What it means is that the godly soul gets cut off and, and does not reach to the body, like the rope that gets severed, and in a lesser sin, it's, a, it's an element of the rope a 613th of the rope that gets severed. And without the neshama, the body can't live, uh, can't go on living, except that some after effect, some afterglow of the neshama remains in the body that can carry it to its 50th year or to its 60th year. And as I'll say in the next Pedic, the reason that today people do not actually die from it is because today our life is not as com- as dependent on the godly soul as it used to be. In the times when people lived off the godly soul, the loss of the godly soul meant death. But since today we don't rely on the godly soul, we rely more on the animal soul, so even the loss of the godly soul does not mean physically dying. So what the Alter Rebbe is, is basically building up in a Yeres HaTshuva is an explanation of Tshuva that demonstrates how every Jew can do tshuva. And that even the lower level tshuva is a complete tshuva and affects every sin, even though it doesn't remove the blemish of the sin, but it certainly removes the guilt and it removes the mechitza, the the obstacle that prevents the Jew from pursuing his Yiddishkeit and from going on to doing mitzvahs, as he said in the first part of Tanya, that a person who sinned cannot begin to serve God until he does tshuva. So the Alta Rebbe is showing how tshuva means returning to God. It doesn't mean fasting. It doesn't mean removing blemishes. It means removing the obstacle that, that then permits you to begin to serve God wholeheartedly because the tshuva has been effective. In the Hayyim Yayim for the 17th of Tammuz, the Rebbe writes as follows. The difference between the first luchas, the first set of, of commandments and the second, is in a number of in a number of areas. First of all, in the luchas themselves. Concerning the first luchas, it says that they were the work of God. Maselikim. The second time, God says to Moshe, "You make the stones. You the stones." So the first time, the stone itself was a work of God. The second time, the stones were made by Moshe. 
Another difference is in the script, in the writing. According to the Gemara in Erevin, only the first ones, the first Ten Commandments, had the miraculous quality of, of being engraved on the tablets. In that they were read from both sides and so on. And then also, in the, in the spiritual condition of the, of the Jews, when they received the commandments. When the first commandments were given, the first ten commandments, the Jews were on the level of tzaddikim. Because when they stood at Mount Sinai, the Tumah of Mitzrayim had come to an end. By the second Luches, they were Bali Tshuva after having sinned with the golden calf. And then, in the level of Moshe, there was also a difference. When the Torah was given, Moshe received a thousand lights as a gift. When the Jews sinned with the golden calf, these were taken from him and were not restored with the second set of commandments except on Shabbos, as he says in the Priyat So in So in all of these examples, the, the first ten commandments were higher than the second. The second commandments, however, did have one superior quality. They have one advantage. And that is that they were given along with the halachis, the medrash, the agoda, and so on, which was a double gift of Torah wisdom. As the Gemara explains in the Dodim, and also... At the second, when the Torah was given, when the commandment, the second commandments were given, that's when Moshe's face began to, to shine with rays of light.